call this meeting of the Huron School Board to order. I'll ask the business manager to note the uh, roll call. I note that uh, Shelley Simmons Ma is appearing by phone. Uh, then I will ask everybody to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first item is the adoption of the agenda. The most recent uh, agenda is in front of you. Uh, there are some additional uh, new hires and contracts for approval. Uh, is there any discussion or action on the agenda? Adoption as presented. Second. A motion and a second to adopt the agenda. Uh, we will have to take a roll call vote. So I'll ask the business manager to uh, call the roll. Simmons. Aye. Van Burkham. Aye. Lee. Aye. Bischoff. Aye. Wheeler. Aye. It's unanimous in favor. That motion carries. So now we go into our dates to remember. Uh, August 27th. Today is our middle school welcome back. Uh, the sixth grade is starting now at five o'clock. Seventh grade will be at six o'clock, and eighth grade will be at seven o'clock. And I'll just note that because we have the seventh grade uh, middle school welcome back tonight at six o'clock, we are endeavoring today to get our meeting down by about 5:45, uh, so that way we have board members that, have multiple board members that need to go to that. So we're going to be expeditious today as best that we can. Uh, August uh, 27th to the 29th is teacher in-service this week. Tomorrow, the 28th, is uh, elementary open houses. Uh, Buchanan K-1 Center from 4.30 to 5.30. Madison 2-3 Center from 5.30 to 6.30. Washington 4-5 Center from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, of course, uh, starting uh, Wednesday uh, and then officially Thursday is South Dakota State Fair. And... Uh, with, with the Labor Day holiday on September 3rd, and our first day back in session for grades 1 through 12 will be September 4th, a week from tomorrow. And then that week, September 4th through 7th, is kindergarten screening with the first day of school for kindergartners, September 10th. September 10th is also the high school open house at 640, and our next regular Board of Education meeting that day also at 5.30 p.m. here at the Instructional Planning Center in the arena. The remaining dates to remember are on the agenda. Next is community input. Are any items not on the agenda? Is anybody present for that? Seeing no one coming forward, we'll move on. Uh, we have no disclosures tonight. Uh, for the consent agenda, the superintendent of schools recommends approval of the following. A, board approval of new hires. We have Gaylor Moo as a substitute teacher and a substitute paraeducator. We have Suzanne Vandenberg as a substitute teacher and substitute paraeducator. Robert Brooks as a substitute teacher and a substitute paraeducator. Gavin Rutledge as a volunteer at the middle school. Stephanie Cheddar as a TAP classroom leader. Uh, Chris Clays and Josh Hader as substitute teacher and substitute paraeducator. Uh, Susan Coughlin Schmidt as substitute teacher and substitute paraeducator also. Uh, uh, Nelly Aduato, I hope I got that correct, as a Spanish interpreter. Uh, Rick Dufek uh, at food service. Diana Nebelsek as, the, as an office substitute. Nicole Mudge as a substitute teacher. Vanessa Stevens as a substitute teacher and substitute paraeducator. Uh, then we have three contracts for board approval. Barb Nicholas, uh, actually all three of them are contract revisions, so it's Barb Nicholas, Sabrina Brooks, and Brandy Fitzgerald are all having their con current contracts revised. Mr. Chairman, those all master's degrees. Okay, so as I noted, they have obtained their master's degree and according to our pay schedule, that involves a increase in their contract amount. Okay, then moving on to C, resignations for board approval. We have four, uh, Amanda Gill from the Washington 4-5 Center as a SPED paraeducator. Lindsay Passmore, a Spanish interpreter. 
Megan Moser as a sped para at Buchanan, and Megan Mamenga as a SLPA at the Buchanan K-1 Center. Uh, we have uh, item D is consideration approval of bills listed um, in the board packet. There are any. Oh, there are none. Okay, so there are no bills. So the C attached list is none. Okay, <coughs> we can cross that out then. Uh, e, request to approve changes to the Huron School District Promotion, uh, sorry, Procurement Guide for Federal Awards. F is a request for open enrollment. Uh, we have two there, OE 2018-09 and dash 10 for board approval. And item G is the request for approval of open enrollment students returning to the Huron School District after the August 1 deadline. Uh, those are designated RH-2018-02, 03, 04, and 05. So four of those. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Clarification on the return to Huron. That is a new law this year. Um, our district and the neighboring districts are uh, in agreement on those and following statute to have those approved. If you have any concerns, then um, then they must go to executive session if you have details, if you need details. Okay. okay. So, uh, as always, if you have any questions, you can ask a question about an item, uh, or if you wish to have it removed from the agenda and uh, addressed separately under the business, we can do that. Or we can pass it on one motion. Action, anybody? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Uh, we will have the business manager call the roll. <clears throat> Timmons, Aye. Van Burkham. Aye. Lee. Aye. Bischoff. Aye. Wheeler. Aye. Unanimous. That, passed. that motion carries. We'll now uh, turn it over to the superintendent to celebrate successes in the district. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Obviously, this will be quite short as we're just getting started and we, and we met two weeks ago and there really haven't been any activities since. So congratulations to our sports teams on early success for the teams as well as individuals. Seems like we're off to a start of competing, competing and learning about life. Thank you to all of the uh, classifieds for getting the building grounds, schedules ready, the food service ready. Thank you to our administrative team for putting together today's in-service program. And I'll talk about how in-service went in the um, superintendent's report later. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Now I'll turn to reports to the board. Our first is the good news report presented by Carla Savell on the summer reading program and Carol Tompkins on our summer nutrition program, our school nutrition program. Summer feeding. Carla's doing the summer feeding program. Yes, mm. the summer reading. Did I say reading? Yeah. Mm. Well, if you want to talk about reading too, you can, <laughs> or summer feeding program. Um, good evening. School's right around the corner. We've been cleaning, gearing up, and we're ready to tackle the new year. Summer was excitingly different with our new mobile summer feeding program and the middle school lunch program. We fed lots and lots of meals. Um, for good news for us tonight, two grants that we were awarded. One was for $15,000 for our new combi oven, which is an amazing oven. You really need to come out and see this oven. Um, it's going to allow us to cook food and hold it for less time, which should translate into better product. We're also fortunate to receive the USDA Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Grant again, and this year we were awarded $79,616. We're happy for the opportunity to offer this to our elementary students again daily. We were also given extra commodity money this year, entitlement money, which was great because it saves us from having to purchase foods. We received an extra $28,000 in March for fresh produce, and we're given and offered another 19,000 in extra commodity foods, which we used a lot of over the summer. So that was a nice little boost for us. Um, summer mobile lunch program. Our program worked to a point, and this is where I'm gonna have to tell you it wasn't exactly as successful as we were hoping. We were able to overcome the obstacles to promote the program well, operate it safely, and we served the community great sack lunches Monday through Friday over the summer in our local parks. Problem is, we lost money. We needed to serve between 150 and 200 day meals per day to make this probably break even. We were averaging 88 meals a day. 
We were glad that we were given the opportunity to try the program, but feel we cannot afford to operate it again next year unless we find financially another way to do it. We're going to operate the middle school summer lunch program again. We invite everyone to come and eat with us there. Um, the mobile program reminded me a bit of the summer that we were given a grant to operate a school bus every day. We made several stops around here and to allow the children to ride to middle school for lunch, hoping that they would come and eat with us at the middle school and return to their neighborhoods immediately after eating lunch. We operated that bus that summer for 24 days and had only five total riders. So I, we're offering, um, I don't know what more we can do. We started out, you know, pretty strong, but we just didn't have enough students come and eat every single day to make it viable, I don't believe. Questions? So the program was funded mostly by federal dollars? It's all reimbursed, just, okay. yep. It was all reimbursement based. So the only thing that we got, in any way, I guess, for any help for that particular program this summer was um, Dakota Provisions did give us a $10,000 um, gift certificate, basically, and allowed us to buy some of the sandwich meat, um, not buy, but procure it through them. Um, and it was very generous, and it helped us out, but it's, it wasn't enough to save us. And so when we say reimbursement base, that means that per lunch that is served, you turn that number into the Federal Department of Education or? To, to the Child and Adult Nutrition Services in Pierre, okay. and it's, and it's um, funded by USDA. Okay. And so then, um, uh, I guess I'd, I'd be interested in seeing more of a dollar breakdown as to how much that cost and what we spent on that. I think it's, what, it's something like that is one of those programs where it may take more than one summer for people to get accustomed to that idea of doing that. And so I don't know that we necessarily need to foreclose the idea of doing it again. Um, I guess it depends. I have no idea how much dollars it, uh, it did cost. So I think it'd be a good idea for maybe the business manager to at least send something out to the board about that so we have an idea of those dollars and can decide if it's worth an investment next summer. Okay. How long has the middle school one been going? I think that I think that had been going two years, and my first year was '97. So I'm going to say since '95. Because I would, you know, it'd be interesting to see kind of to Mr. Wheeler's point about how long did that take to kind of catch on, and because now everybody knows about it. Um, I'm not sure. I came into this district with during the third year of of a summer feeding, so I'm not ex actually sure how it was launched or how well it did. And until I got into this position, um, it was growing, but um, I can't tell you how much how much it was making or losing to start with. Sure. Do we know? Did the numbers start out strong at the beginning of summer and just taper off? Um, somewhat. We had we started out. What was our biggest day? Maybe a hundred and six. Uh, was Oh, yeah, she's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think our best day was 225. Okay. You know, and it depended on what they wanted to eat. It depended on whether it looked like it was going to rain. That kept some away. Um, there were a lot of variables. Um, if it was too hot, we didn't serve adult meals. And Carl and I have talked about wondering if that made a difference. But in reality, I just don't want to carry money. I, I, you know, and have to deal with that too. Um, labor was extremely high with two people on the truck serving and two people cleaning up and policing the park and kind of just overseeing the children. So labor was really, really high. That okay. was one of our one of our biggest expenses. Okay. Anything else? Well, thank you for doing that this summer, giving that a shot so our uh, yeah. students in the uh, community had that opportunity. You're welcome. Good evening. As a middle school kitchen team leader, my responsibilities include overseeing the summer food service program. And again, this spring, you supported our request to conduct this program. And this year's summer feeding program included the addition of the mobile feeding truck, as Carol mentioned. And this evening, we share with you our changed summer. 
Summer Food Service Program provides nutritious meals to children during vacation periods. The food service staff served students at the middle school from June 4th through August 3rd, and for three weeks in June, ESL summer school students ate breakfast and lunch. For this time period at the middle school, we served community families, SPED summer school, the Nordby Center day camp, and new this year, the Heron Parks and Rec day camp, volleyball camp attendees, driver's ed students, and returning marching band students. And total meals served at the middle school were 13,844. So on to the new addition to the summer feeding family, the mobile truck. Many hours of planning went into developing the route with Splash Central and Winter and Prospect Parks being the chosen stops. Service to those stops was also June 4th through August 3rd, providing the best meals we could, knowing we were limited to only cold food was a challenge, but a variety of sandwiches, fresh fruit and veggies were offered in each day's meals. Children rode their bikes, they walked over to the parks with parents or care providers, and the Parks and Rec Day Camp was able to use, utilize the Splash Central stop throughout the serving period. Total meals served from our mobile truck were 3,871. We seriously look at the total numbers of the program year to year, but really the rewarding result is that children were fed. 17,715 meals were eaten. And some of those who came each day commented, oh, I'm starving, thanks. And daily it was clear that some students really depended upon this meal. And also that some adults who brought their kids every day commented that this was so convenient and I don't have to cook today. School Nutrition would like to publicly thank Dakota Provisions for a generous $1,000 donation to our summer feeding program. Their interest and concern for community members helped us reach those who received the benefit of the program's goal in providing summer meals when school is not in session. And thanks to the Huron Board of Education for allowing us to operate the Summer Food Service Program again this year. School Nutrition invites the Board of Education, all staff, parents, grandparents, and community members to eat lunch with us anytime this year. We are wishing you all the best of school years. Thank you. Thank you. Do you happen to know how, what your total was last year for meals served? I don't have the exact number in I front of me. I probably got it in. I do know too. that um, total meals right. with the two programs combined, the mobile and the middle right. school, were more than last year. It was more? Okay. Individually, the middle school numbers were down from last year's just middle school. There was only three weeks of ESL summer school this year, which I think is a factor that right. may have played into that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now turn it over to the superintendent for his report. Thank you. My report will uh, center on the uh, countdown to the beginning of the school year. Last week we had a new teacher orientation week. It is uh, something we've now done for the um, eight years that I've uh, served as the superintendent. And the um, teachers know, the certified staff knows that when they sign a contract to come here, with the different things that we do for them, they also, for us, come in one week early. So they know their first contract at the same compensation is 185 days rather than 180 days. And so last week, throughout the week, they received all of the orientation, whether it was from the business office and central administration to the orientation on our curriculum and instruction, to our ESL program, to our special ed programs. Um, that went on and then they met with their uh, principals throughout the week so that when we began today uh, those 20 people had uh, a basis for which to start rather than walking in the first day and being um, a little bit odd with everything that was going on so I'm, I'm very grateful for that program I'm grateful that the uh, teachers uh, go in on it and I'm really grateful for Lori who couldn't be here tonight that she coordinates the mentors that are here and meet with the teachers last week so they have a direct link to someone who's in their building, in their department, in order to get off to a good start. So I, I just wanted you to know that the mentor program, I think, does well. 
Um, the second thing I want to talk about uh, that most of you, I think, are aware, but we've really had wonderful feedback over the past um, several years now on our 13 paycheck uh, option. And what we do is, is that when uh, anyone comes to work for us in the teaching position, but most particularly those that are just out of college, they have the option, they don't get any more money, but they have the option of their first year's contract being split into 13 paychecks rather than 12 paychecks so that they can get a starter check on August 20th instead of trying to move to town and work a month without any money for the connections, the down payment on an apartment or, or other living arrangements, et cetera. And we have several that take advantage of the 13 paychecks. So the way that works is their contract was divided by 13 and they received a payment in August and they'll receive a payment next August out of the same contract. And then next September begins their 12 month payments on their second year contract, which then they experience a boost in uh, take home pay because of that. I think that that is important. The um, in service this morning, what I would share with the board has a lot to do with compliance. And the, the entire staff of uh, 300 plus certified and classified that were there really do understand that there are things that have to do with our initiatives on, uh, on uh, bullying prevention, our initiatives on uh, discrimination, our initiatives on FERPA and privacy, that all of those things need to be taught each year and we need to verify that each employee received the training. What our cabinet staff and, and technology have worked together on is that this is the first year that we've used our swivel camera system, which is utilizing a camera that just takes the camera off of an iPad and records each of the presentations, which are mandated training. So those were all recorded, and then they're brought up here to the Instructional Planning Center, and they are filed, and uh, Linda Peets' office with Amanda keeps track of who was there today and received all the formal training, and then everyone else within 20 days must come up, register here, and they can either watch them all at once or come up and take the different trainings, receiving exactly what we gave today because by technology it was recorded and put on working disks so that they can come up and get that training. And, and compliance has an awful lot to do with proof that people ought to know what's expected along the lines of privacy, harassment protection, and, uh, and all of those things. So it was a good day. This afternoon I visited the elementary schools as they were in their uh, training and meeting mode. The um, middle school and high school have more of that tomorrow where one of the sessions the uh, teachers are on their own to prepare their rooms one afternoon or one morning session and so with the open houses tonight the middle school's session was was uh, there tomorrow morning the last part of my report here tomorrow morning uh, we are bringing in um, uh, what I believe is an expert from uh, South Dakota State from Brookings to work with us again on how to respond and intervene to students' particular learning deficiencies in order to make sure that that the, we are properly placing those who go into special education. That we're not just throwing kids into special education, but we're making sure that we've done everything outside of special ed in order to meet their needs and their learning deficiencies. Because as you know, we are moving forward with 17 fewer employees than a year ago in order to balance the budget. And so we need to increase our capacity to meet those students' needs outside of special education. So I think we had a good week last week and a, and a, uh, a good experience today with the entire in-service. I want to thank the board members who were able to uh, be at the um, in-service today and thank David for giving the welcome. And um, that is my report. Thank you. Any questions for our superintendent? Seeing none, I uh, will now move on to old business. The first item under old business is the second reading of the branding package. We've already approved the majority of the package. This is the approval of the tiger head as the final piece. And of course, the uh, most recent versions of that uh, package are in the board packet. So with that, 
I'll ask for any um, discussion or action on that item. It's up for second reading and approval. It's been on for uh, first reading, last uh, meeting, and the introduction before that, and obviously been discussed multiple times. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd yield to the board members and then a follow-up with what I did today. I was just going to say I move approval. Second. Okay. Yeah, let him second. The motion and a second to approve it. I'll ask uh, Mr. Nebelsek to uh, comment. For the benefit of the public, and um, I received some really good uh, feedback today in that we went through the entire branding package and how to keep the, the H and the Huron in the, in the correct ratio as they increase it or decrease it. Um, the entire uh, package was presented to uh, all of the employees today. And when we talked about the last piece, the tiger head, we explained to them that there is a approved animation to almost every sports organization or school organization that that's where it has evolved to. And that where I really got a lot of positive uh, informal feedback from all of those employees today is when I said, every one of you has a passion for the tiger we have. And they were all nodding their heads. And I said, it's 18 different tigers. Now, it's not 18 different tigers to each of those individuals. Each of those individuals has a specific tiger in mind um, that is the one that they have an affinity to. And I, I can say with a clear conscience that the feedback that I got today was positive. They like the fact that we waited, that people got to catch up to it, and that we took some specific local input in, uh, in getting a tiger that they could be comfortable with. Um, if someone's received negative in the process, I didn't today as we went through that step. Being a HHS alumni, you know, this is not the tiger that I grew up with. It's a lot different, um, but that's not our tiger. That tiger is used in multiple other places. So this one will be a tiger that we'll own and we'll have rights to. So that's what we're going for. You know, at the football game Friday, how many different tigers did we see on every piece of apparel out there? We didn't see any consistency. And so that's all we're trying to build is consistency and something that we can identify with. And like you said, people have an affinity for 18 different tigers. And hopefully at some point in time, we have one. You know, I mean, there's not 18 different jackrabbits out there, 18 yeah. different coyotes out there. There's one. So what. Uh well, just to make sure, the one that you're approving, because yeah. I put it up on the screen today, has the bold green eyes, yeah. and it was, uh, and it was, um, tell me, guys, it was ta it was tapered a little bit by, by some folks here in the community, that uh, got it a little more ferocious, a little more uniform, and the elementary said they didn't want a tame tiger, they wanted the one tiger, and uh, and then it's, I showed it today now. We got to make sure that as we go forward, if that's got the green, yes, yep. the green and the, we know that that's the correct one when it's got the green pupils, because the rest of it was tapered by local people, and then, and then we were able to get support. And as what's in front of you, um, uh, is the, uh, is the version that then, we sent to the, uh, the people who uh, created it for us, and they. They tailored that into all of the different so people. I, for the benefit of those watching at home, unfortunately, no one's able to put it up on the screen right now. So you have to go online, and uh, you can. It's in the board packet. It's available online. I don't. Yep. Yes, it'll it's be on. online. And what I what I plan to do is again go through a release of the whole thing, and yeah. and hopefully I can technology can help me get it out on the page and and um, and in the media. Okay. So, and if someone wants to use this tiger for their promotional t-shirt, they're able to do that? Yes. The policy that we'll be working on basically says that if they have questions, it's a responsibility of the superintendent to maintain the consistency that was intended in the, in the uh, issue. Uh, if you guys want to speak to it, please do. I was going to say there will be a branding guide that will come out that will lay out the correct ways to use the logos, the correct co colors, the actual colors that you can go and download and fonts and whatnot so there'll be an actual guide that people don't want to use the logos they can go in there and read through that and make sure they're using it properly and most important it does not restrict anyone else from 
from whatever uh, version of the 18 Tigers they want to use in private or as, as a group that's not using tax dollars. This just says that this is what we'll move forward with and we're going to do the next step, Craig, and that's register for yep. trademark, right? Yep. Okay, any further discussion on this topic? Seeing none, we'll, move, we'll proceed to vote on the motion to adopt the total package uh, for the branding, including the tiger head. And I'll ask the business manager to call the roll. Simmons, what? Aye. Van Burkham? Aye. Lee? Aye. Bischoff? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. Pass unanimously. Okay, that motion carries. Uh, so we'll now move to the next item. Uh, this is Paul, a revision of policy CDB, the organizational chart for the Heron School District. This is a second reading. The change is just to update the fact that we now have a separate transportation director. Uh, so, any uh, entertain? I'll entertain a motion to adopt this. So moved. Second. So motion and second to adopt the revision to policy CDB, the organizational chart. I'll ask the business manager to again call the roll. Simmons, what? Aye. Van Burkham? Aye. Lee? Aye. Bischoff? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. Passed unanimously. That motion carries. And then moving down to item C, uh, second reading on a revision to policy A, B, our non-discrimination policy. This simply is revised to update the office phone number of the newly assigned co-district Title IX coordinator, Linda Peets. So I'll entertain a motion to approve this policy revision. So moved. Second. A motion, second to adopt the revision to policy A B. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the business manager to call the roll. Simmons, what? Aye. Van Burkham? Aye. Lee? Aye. Bischoff? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. 5 0. That motion also carries. Uh, our next item is approval of the Tiger After School Program Handbook for this school year. The superintendent recommends approval of the handbook. Right, and we approved it um, earlier in the year, and then with uh, Mrs. Pete's coming on, her and Amanda went through all the different steps and uh, brought um, revisions last time, and, and I recommend approval of those. Any discussion on this item? Move approval. Second. Motion and second to approve the handbook. Any further discussion? It's nice to see the new logo. It's nice to see the new logo on that handbook. That's right. It's good that we approved the H a long time ago, so that's already out in the... Uh, There's been that on a lot of them. In, yep. in the document, so. So, so you know for the discussion, I'll ask the business manager to call the roll. Simmons, what? Aye. Van Burkham? Aye. Lee? Aye. Bischoff? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. 5-0. Okay, that carries. Mr. Chairman? Before yes. you go to item E, may I speak for just a second? Go ahead. Okay. Is your brother coming? Do you have a way to, do you have a way to text him and let him know that that yeah. uh, we are dangerously close to that agenda item? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Chairman. Okay. Our uh, last item of old business is adoption of the tax request for 2018 taxes payable in 2019. This is the annual adoption of the tax levy. Uh, as contained in the uh, board packet. Is there any discussion or comment on this? Much of this is set by statute as to what we can levy. Would move adoption? The motion and second. a second to approve the tax request for 2018, taxes payable in 2019. Any discussion on that item? Seeing no discussion, I'll again ask the business manager to call the roll. Simmons, what? Aye. Van Burkham? Aye. Lee? Aye. Bischoff? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. Passed unanimously. That motion carries. Uh, so that now moves us into new business. Our first item is information from Head Start. Uh, I guess I'll ask our business manager to comment on this item. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Head Start is a, the program that leases the old McKinley Elementary Building in North Huron. They operate their program there and they pay us rent every month and uh, with a year-to-year -year lease that's approved by the school board. So they have let us know that they were going to apply for a grant to make 
improvements to the old playground and we received uh, notice from them that they were successful in getting that grant so they gave us a little list of what they want to do up there they want to place some six foot fence on the west side from the existing fence to the basketball cage they want to put a four foot fence on the east side of the basketball cage with a gate they want to add a storage shed they want to repair and repaint the current merry-go-round they want to remove the old teeter-totter and four seat spring bouncer and they want to add ground cover like pea gravel and a border and they also want to add some climbing structures in place of where that teeter-totter and bouncer were at so they wanted us to know what their intentions were and uh, I guess I'll leave it up to the board I don't know if they want to take formal action on that or if you have any concerns I'll certainly relay them back to Head Start great idea to improve the facility mm -hmm. some so I guess we have a someone renting a facility who is making improvements to the property do we want to take formal action on that item I don't think it's I think we did when the memorial bench was uh, donated and I think it's probably good practice to when uh, someone is making formal I mean making improvements to real property that we own it's probably best to at least have a formal acceptance of that I'll make a motion to formally accept it then second it's a motion a second to formally accept the uh, playground updates that Head Start is making of course we gratefully uh, we're very grateful that, that they are doing that it's always great that they are taking that making that investment into the property um, to improve its use for the students there any further discussion on that motion seeing none again I guess I will ask the business manager to call the roll Simmons one Aye. Van Burkham. Aye. Lee. Aye. Bischoff. Aye. Wheeler. Aye. Five zero. That motion carries. So, our last item of new business is uh, a report on an Eagle Scout project at the Huron Tennis Courts. Okay, I'm going to, um, and this is Riley, right? Yes. Other two, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, Reese and Riley Euchre have come to the uh, school and actually worked on this the past couple of months they've had um, they've tried to meet with administrators and tennis advocates etc and they are uh, working on some aesthetics that uh, go above and beyond what our what our tennis complex has at this time I don't want to steal their thunder I'm hoping Riley can tell the story on both the, his project and uh, Reese's and what I tell you is that uh, we are miles ahead of many, many tennis complexes with what we've built. Uh, these boys have some uh, interest in uh, donating through fundraising and a scout project, a way to put some uh, sun shelter and, uh, and picnic aesthetics out uh, on the complex. And uh, I'll let them t t visit about uh, whatever they would like and then explain how we have um, secured the main center part so that your long-range plans for a overall major project can't be would not be interfered with with what they would like to do and so I admire their their uh, work towards uh, Eagle Scout and uh, it's been fun for me to get to know a couple of Mr. Radke's students so uh, Riley can you go up to the podium and tell the yes. story of the whole thing and possibly um, possibly answer their questions and if Reese arrives I'll I'll point for him to join you immediately okay, okay. all right uh, again this is Riley Euchre welcome Riley okay hello board and uh, audience we were looking at something for an Eagle Scout project with an Eagle Scout project we have to look at of course is it benefiting a nonprofit organization like our school now both me and my brother are do play on the tennis courts we have noticed many things that makes the great complex maybe not as great as one would think. We like to propose putting up um, shelters, picnic benches, and signs as the tennis association, the coaches, ask for that sort of treatment toward the courts. 
the specifics of my brother's shelters are going to be harder to give to you as I do not have his specifics. A lot of that will have to be whenever he shows up. And I, Riley, I can help you with that because I've mm -hmm. studied that. So, okay. So do you want that part of it? Because yours is what goes under the shelters. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Mine will be attire stuff, mainly just making sure that the shelters aren't just there to be shelters. They're going to be kind of more organized with having a picnic bench at each for shelter on each uh, direction or if you've ever if you've ever seen the courts they go out in the four directions and we plan on having a, ta or a, a table at every end. Now these tables will be the same color as the shelters as we think that would look the best. These tables will be 46 inches so it will be a standard round table. Um, these will be then bolted down to the cement so that anything like weather or people wanting to take these benches will be it'll be a lot harder for them to do so we uh, I look for mainly making signs that as the tennis director of I mean the tennis coach of the boys mr. Hedlum said he wants to have them circular with being sturdy material being shaped or being color and detailed as a tennis ball so it'll be round and be on both sides and we're gonna put it where the mesh isn't so if you've ever seen the courts, there's like this mesh that's used to kind of block out the sun. And we will not be putting any signs there as to not break the mesh. Essentially what we'll be doing after that is detailing the numbers in white. And after that, we'll see, we'll try to fit the picnic benches down and then any questions Right, this is the first, I knew about the picnic tables, this is the first I've heard about the signs. Is this simply to uh, number the courts? This is, yeah, because of many of the parents and the students, they, it's like, go over to that court, and it's really hard for them to tell okay. what court is it. So that when they're assigned at a tournament, whatever, that they're at a certain court. Grace, you are, yeah, we, mm. we have a television audience that has been anxiously awaiting your arrival, okay? That's wonderful. Anyway, so we're going to finish, though, with Riley while we're on that, and so... The signage in the shape of, of uh, tennis balls will yes. be so that we have the courts numbered yes. so that we have a system to identify what court people are competing on, right? And then the tables, just to bring Reese up to date, the tables would go underneath the shelters as a part of the aesthetics, that yes. what I'm understanding? Okay, so we did this a little bit backwards, but Reese has arrived as uh, is in the nick of time, and so... Um, Reese, welcome aboard, and would you please explain your part of the project that we're informing the school board that you would like them to, to give their blessings on? Of course. Well, um, again, going along with the project that my brother talked about, uh, we, do, do we do really need something out uh, along these courts. The one thing that our wonderful tennis complex has that well, one thing that it lacks comparatively to a lot of other schools is that there's no shade whatsoever. It is just the sun out there all day, and we have kids practicing out there. In the spring heat, we have people coming from all across the state. And the one thing they, do, one thing we don't really have is any sort of protection from from the rain or from the sun. Like comparatively to like Brookings, Brookings is a big example. They have these wonderful little gazebos set up. Each team usually centers around one of those gazebos. They have a place to put their stuff, a place to put their food. And it's really nice to have a place like that where you can centralize, uh, have a place for you to meet, have a place where you can talk to your coaches. Here on, we don't really have that. That's one of the few things that we lack. And that's one thing that I'd really like to do for my Eagle Scout project as I am on the tennis team. And we are out there for quite a long time. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of sweating and not enough escape from the sun can lead to sunburns, it can lead to dehydration, it can lead to heat exhaustion, it can lead to a lot of bad things if you're not given the necessary protection. And what I would like to do is I would like to install four uh, gazebos to go at the ends of the courts to where you know people could have a place where they could set their stuff up and still not obstruct the view that people could have to watch all the different matches going on. They would be roughly around level to where the players would, so they'd have very good viewing areas. We'd set them up so they wouldn't obstruct anyone who was viewing from the bleachers. 
and and also another locate another great thing about the location is they're set up on the ends right next to the tower outlets so if any students wanted to set up say a crock pot they wanted to bring a freezer or if they wanted to charge their phones that would be easy to do and now because we're set up on the ends because normally we used to have all the teams cluster in the center area and it became very very crowded especially on quads where we have anywhere between 20 to 30 different kids and parents there at one time and it can get very crowded and if we were to set them up on the ends it could disperse them out giving parents more room giving people more room and it would also give people a people a place to put their stuff so it isn't lying about people would usually sometimes pick out a long bench area or sometimes they would just set their stuff randomly somewhere around the courts and sometimes it's a struggle to find it because it's a rather large area if we had a central area where the teams can go and set up it would solve that problem it would give them a wonderful place to go and relax and hang out and sit down and sometimes eat their food because on long quads and long tries usually they have to go get food and come back and normally they just eat on the bleachers while well, if we were to have the picnic tables that my brother would set up there too there would be a much much nicer place for them to eat and another thing that a lot of people really like about the Brookings Center is they have the picnic tables too and they can eat there and they put their snacks there it's it's a wonderful thing and I'd really like to try to give that opportunity that Brookings has and a lot of other complex has to ours and just you know give a place where teams can relax, uh, players can relax, practices and even coaches if they wanted to. Coaches could set up that one area, that'd be much nicer. So board what I'd like to add as the very specifics is that uh, they have chosen a 12 by 12 um, prefab shelter that is sold at Lowe's and I stopped and inspected one this weekend so that I could look at it. They used to have canvas roofs. These have a metal roof. They're in a wood grain uh, look to them. They're a 12 by 12 shelter and they're proposing putting them at the four ends of the alleyways so that if and when through our five-year capital plan we can uh, put together a major canopy system in the middle, uh, this does not detract from that at all. Um, when I visited with the young man, we understood that something like this might have a timeline as to how long, how long it lasted and stayed aesthetically pleasing, and so I just warned them that it would not be a 100-year commitment to having them out there, but uh, they're pretty passionate about this, and it appears to have the support of the tennis coaches and, and uh, current parents to um, to allow them to uh, do this on the four ends and uh, uh, to me it would be a, uh, a nice way to have students involved in, in problem solving and I hope you have questions for them or that uh, my recommendation is you would support moving forward and allowing them to gift this project because I believe the details, gentlemen, is that you go into fundraising as soon as you get the nod from the yes. board, correct? Yes, yep. So they're well, we seeking permission. To, yeah, we would have to talk to another board but once they got permission, we could start fundraising the next day or that day of, depending on what time we get done. Just have one question. Has Mr. Roder weighed in on this? Excuse me. Has Mr. Roder weighed in? He on was this? in on the meeting. Yes. He was the first yes. person I talked to about putting up the shelters, and so he was. He's, he's okay with the yes. plan that's presented. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I know the one thing we weren't able to because we couldn't get everyone there at once, but um, Rex, the only concern I had is whether there's a way to uh, bolt them down through the concrete with anchors. Are we able to, to drill into the concrete and anchor the structures? Yes. Okay. I know the administrators were much more excited when we went to the ends and did not. Am I describing that accurately? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So this will go gazebo or picnic table, bleachers, center, bleachers, gazebo, right? Both yes. yes. Okay. We'll go along and on we'll go on all four ends. Right. Mm -hmm. Enough money for four of them. Okay. Do you know how much it's going to cost? Uh, each individual shelter is fourteen hundred dollars, and and then we would when we would also have to rent a, a hammer drill and then buy the individual uh, anchoring systems to put them into the concrete. We'd want to make sure that you work directly with Mr. Sawville on on the permanent part of that. Okay. Yeah. And the benches cost about one thousand two hundred dollars. 
So, but they want, don't require any sort of exterior tools or power tools to get them into the ground. They will just kind of screw in. We'll have to kind of drill it in, but we have the ability to within our own means. Well, I would move approval of the projects. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve this Eagle Scout project for Reese and Riley Uecker. I'll just comment that as an Eagle Scout myself, my uh, school, my project was working in the high school. And so, because it had to do with something I was involved with also, and so it's a great opportunity. I'll say yours, just on the dollar figures you're putting out, was much more aggressive than mine was. Um, and so it's great that you guys are willing to do that. Uh, it's just a lot of work, and I know that uh, when you get through it and you're done, you'll be very happy that you did it, so. If I may. They have actually been talking about this and been in the works for this or something like this for quite some time. We've heard a lot about it. So we're very excited that they're able to move forward with this. Great. Uh, Reese, it looks like they're headed for approval, but can you look at this and affirm that this is, is this the gazebo? If you could walk over here, because mm -hmm. if it is, I'd like to show the members. Is that, the, is that, I yes, call, that that's yes, what that I thought it was. Yes. And that's what, when I look, so I'll move it up and down the line, but that's, it's a 12 by 12 and that's what it would look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can pass it down the line. One on the left. Oh, thank you. I have been to that Brookings one, and when there's because we always go to that playground that's kind of next door behind that school. and yeah, I mean, you see a lot of those teams kind of congregating underneath those. And that is one thing being out at our tennis courts that I've noticed. Is we got those wind stops up, but nothing to stop that sun. So yeah, I think it's a great project. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a lot of good things about our new tennis complex. A lot of the teams really, really do love its location. They love how close all the courts are. They love the fact they aren't all in one long row spread out over a big area. And that's really the only problem I can think of that these courts have had other than the windscreens. That's it. Other than that, they're wonderful and I'd really like to try to make them better and try to improve them if that is at all possible. Well, any further discussion? There's a motion on the table to approve the project. Saying no for the discussion, I will ask the business manager to call the roll. Simmons, well. Van Berkham? Aye. Lee? Aye. Bischoff? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. Passed unanimously. Can motion carries. Congratulations, mm -hmm. guys. Good Hope luck, you guys. I assume you have to take it to the Eagle, your Eagle board? Yes. yes. Okay, so. Good There's luck, guys. They'll probably be more difficult than we will. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the executive session is unnecessary. That was just in case uh, any of the open enrollment requests were needed uh, discussion. So um, so that brings us to adjournment. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So motion and second to adjourn. I'll ask the business manager to call the roll for one last time tonight. Simmons, well. Aye. Van Berkham. Aye. Lee. Aye. Bischoff. Aye. Wheeler. Aye. Five zero. That motion carries. We are adjourned. Good luck, parents.